Good morning. So glad that you could uh, join with us uh, this wonderful Sunday. It's a, a Sunday which we celebrate the sacraments of our Lord. As you can see, we have Holy Communion today. And I want to encourage you, you could pause this video at any time and uh, go and, and find some juice and bread and be ready and prepared to join with me in Holy Communion uh, at the end of today's uh, devotional message. And so, again, I want to thank you so much for joining me today and, it, uh, and certainly for your emails, comments, uh, text, uh, uh, your responses on Facebook, uh, all mean so much. And I really appreciate uh, the time that you take to let me know what a blessing these uh, messages are for you. If you have your Bible, I would encourage you to turn with me to Luke's Gospel. It's another post-resurrection uh, visitation of Christ. You, we've been looking at some of those stories uh, in Scripture, uh, mainly in the Gospel of John, but today we're in the Gospel of uh, Luke because Luke's the only one who records uh, what we call the Emmaus Road experience, where Jesus comes to two of his uh, disciples and has an encounter with them that leads to a wonderful eye-opening experience. It's a long passage of scripture, uh, and I wanted to read it all because it's a beautiful story. It begins in Luke's gospel, the 21st, 24th chapter, beginning with verse 13. Now the same day that, it, of course, Luke is talking about the, re the day of the resurrection, uh, on the same day that our Lord rose from the grave, uh, he met two of the, his disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus came and walked with them, but they, kept, but they were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing together as you're walking? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting uh, Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days? What things, Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of the women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and they told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman said, but they did not see Jesus. And he said to them, how foolish are you and slow to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly... Uh, it is nearly 11. The day is almost over. Evening, I'm sorry. The day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. Uh, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we talked with him on the road? And he opened the scriptures to us. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. And then the two told them what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may all the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, for we dedicate the hearing and the preaching of your word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. I love that passage where 
when Jesus began to ask these two disciples as they're traveling on the road to, to Emmaus, uh, what, uh, why they were so downcast and why they were disheartened. Um, the, the two that was traveling said, are you a stranger to Jerusalem? Do you not what's go know what's going on? And, he, and what had had to happen? And they were able to share their hopes and their dreams. And then Jesus said, oh, how foolish are you and how slow at heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And then I love it to where Jesus begins to open up the scriptures uh, to the disciples. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said about him and all of the scripture. See, on the road to Emmaus, this is beautiful. Jesus gave uh, those two disciples one of the most amazing Bible studies ever. Can you imagine Jesus himself explaining the scripture? I mean, that would be powerful. He taught them that all the scriptures had said, and Jesus was referring specifically to the Old Testament of bearing witness to him. So in effect, Jesus was saying and saying to them and to us that you cannot read the Old Testament without reading about Jesus. You can't read the law, Jesus said, without reading about me. You can't read the history without reading about me. You can't read the Psalms without reading about me. You can't read the prophets, Jesus said, without reading about me. And so Jesus points to all the scriptures that, that talked about his, who he was and what he had come to do in his mission. And this is the beauty of scripture, how to read the Bible and discover Jesus in it. Oh, I love that. Each time that I open up the word of God, it's an opportunity, as Wesley said, it's a means of grace by which we can receive the grace of God. But the Holy Spirit then becomes our teacher. And the Holy Spirit reveals to us who Jesus is, his mission, and his call upon our life as we have been talking about to go make disciples. Uh, his call upon our life to walk with him, to follow him, to be a part of the mission that he had left here on planet earth for us to do. Like those disciples on the road to Emmaus, we want to move from the Bible study about the Christ, this is interesting, to the breaking of the bread with Jesus and to the recognition that Jesus is even right here with us by the power of the Holy Spirit. They're walking on the road to Emmaus. They have this wonderful Bible study. And then Jesus gives the most wonderful illustration of who he is when he's invited to go home and they're having dinner and he breaks the bread. And in the breaking of the bread, the scripture says that their eyes were open and they recognized that Christ was with them. You know, there's a transition we make as we read scripture. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. And then on each first Sunday of the month, we as Methodists come together and we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. And in the breaking of the bread, Christ reveals himself to us. We have fellowship with, with Christ through the powerful means of the Holy Spirit. John Wesley, as I said earlier, called this the means of grace. It's a means by which God opens up channels in which we receive his divine grace. And Holy Communion, we as Methodists have looked at, Holy Communion has three different realities. It has a past reality where we celebrate a memorial meal. Jesus, when he broke the bread, he said, do this in remembrance of me. And so we are called to remember his death, burial, and resurrection. We're called to remember this memorial meal that on the night our Lord gave himself up for us. He took bread. He instituted uh, then the Lord's Supper, which we call the sacrament, the Holy Communion, where he broke bread and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body given for you. So Holy Communion has a past reality. We remember what Christ has done for us on the cross, but it also has a present reality. And the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup as we will do today, 
we understand that Christ is present with us in the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit. And what a blessing that is today to know that in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup, the real presence of Christ can be with us. That these are just not just simply symbols of his body and his blood, but the real presence of Christ is coming to be with us. And this becomes a means by which we receive the grace of God. And then we know that there's a past reality, a present reality, but a future reality. Each time we break the bread and we share the cup, we look forward to his return again. Jesus said that he wouldn't eat of the bread or taste of the fruit of the vine until we all come together and feast at his heavenly banquet. What a wonderful blessing that will be when we can come together with Christ and break the bread and share the cup and rejoice that Jesus is our Lord. Today, as we come together, we remember his death, his burial, his resurrection. We are encouraged and strengthened in our journey in life because the real presence of Christ is with us today. And I pray the real presence of Christ will be with you to encourage you today, to bring healing into your life, to sustain you in uh, your journey. I don't know what all that you're experiencing, but I know that I know this to be true, that Christ wants to be present with you. As you open up the scriptures and read, he wants you to learn about him, to know that he is there for you, to help you, to forgive you, to heal you, and that in the reading of the scripture, we experience his powerful presence with us. As we break bread and share the cup today, we remember that he is the same as he was yesterday, he was Lord. Today, he is Lord, and tomorrow, he will be Lord as well. And so we can rest in uh, the assurance that Christ's presence draws us to himself. And then in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup today, I pray that our eyes are open and that we truly can see and experience the risen Christ in our life today. I ask that in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. As we prepare for Holy Communion, I'm going to be reading uh, the literature, uh, or the liturgy, I should say, of Holy Communion. Uh, in our hymnal, uh, it's found on page 12. You may not have it, uh, but I'm going to read it, and you may remember some of the responses. And if you do, I would encourage you to just respond. Uh, the invitation for Holy Communion is simply this. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Now would you just take a moment and lift up your own personal prayers of confession and repentance unto the Lord and I'll do the same. Let us pray together. Amen and amen. Well, the next thing we usually do is uh, offer up uh, then the pardon. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That's proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am forgiven. And we can both say glory to God. Amen and amen. As we move into the great thanksgiving, it says that the Lord be with you and also with me. Let's lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord because it is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to our Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with all the people on earth and the people of the company of heaven, we praise the Lord's name and join their unending hymn. Would you say it with me? Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ that by his baptism and suffering and death and resurrection he gave birth to the church. He delivered us from sin and death and made us a new covenant by the water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he blessed it. Blessed are you, Jehovah God, King of the universe, that brings forth the wheat from the earth. He took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat for this is my body given for you. And likewise, after the supper, he took of the cup and he gave you thanks. Blessed are you, Jehovah God, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink for this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you shall in remembrance, <coughs> excuse me, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. You know it, say it with me. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. You see, that's the three, the three realities of Holy Communion. Christ has died, we remember. This is a memorial meal. That Christ is risen, he is present with us and Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you would take the body of Christ, the body of our Lord, broken for us and given for us, take and eat. The blood of Christ, take and drink. I'll be receiving by intention where I dip the bread into the cup. Let us pray. Holy Father, we give you thanks for this meal that we have received. We receive your presence and we receive your grace and forgiveness. Strengthen us to be the body of Christ. Strengthen us to be a light in darkness. Strengthen us, O oh God, to be salt into this world. For we ask in Christ's name, amen and amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed having Holy Communion with me today. I certainly have enjoyed sharing communion with you as well. God bless you and your family. Go in peace. May the peace of Christ be with you in this day. Amen and amen.